Hello YouTube. So this is going to be my second tutorial for Lightroom. Um, this time not specifically for the Leica M monochrome, but of course you can adapt the same kind of structure and same procedure to uh, Leica M monochrome pictures as well as of course any other uh, images that you get out of your camera. What I'm going to do today is not go through a complete process of editing a an image in Lightroom 5. Um, but rather focus on a very specific um, part of photo editing and that is how you can I think very easily draw the attention of your viewer to the area in the picture where you really want to have the viewer to focus and that is by directing the light basically and Lightroom offers um, some very I wouldn't say unique but easy to use tools um, to accomplish that um, with that said, um, I have selected one image that I took recently uh, of a person sitting in a restaurant and as you can already see, um, the three versions are quite different. Um, I'll start from the from the right hand side because that is basically the picture that is not unedited but I haven't really done anything to um, to steer the light in in this picture to a specific area. So it's uh, these are only global adjustments that I've made. Um, for instance, contrast, uh, as I've shown in the first uh, video tutorial, uh, the gradation curve. Um, I increased, I think, a little bit the exposure and and stuff like this. But everything I did, I applied to the complete picture. Um, on the very left, you see basically the the raw picture that I have on the right hand side but where I already applied a little bit of um, like a, a light um, area uh, in the picture and I've also reduced or increased vignetting um, to make that bright area uh, even pop out a little bit more and in the middle you basically have the end result uh, that I have then also posted on various fora um, as you can see here I'll do one quick um, full frame of that image and I think that's that's even a little bit too bright here but in any case <laughs> um, let me walk you through the process so I'll, I'll take this on the on the right hand side go into the development section in Lightroom and the tool that I want to show you today is basically a, a radial filter what it does is and I'll show you because that's easier to explain um, you basically click on it once and the first thing you can do is with the mouse cursor I, I hope you can see it uh, you go basically in the center area of where you want to draw that uh, radial filter and increase it um, in in any direction really basically and you will end up with this circular in this case an ellipsoid uh, shape that you can um, drag in in any area of the picture um, you can go onto the either left or to any of those edges the little uh, rectangles that you have here and a little bit to the left and you can um, move the uh, the direction of the um, the circle the radial filter or you can click on the the actual rectangles and can draw um, the area bigger or smaller and you can do it in each of those uh, four rectangles. So th that's at least how you um, define the area where you want to apply um, the effects that you're going to decide or de define on this right hand column. So in my first tutorial I explained to you basically all the, the global adjustments and they're also on this right hand side area uh, in Lightroom 5. When you have enabled um, any of those filters, but in this case the radial filter, um, a little black dot is in the middle of the, the filter. If you click anywhere else, it's going to go away, or if you click schließen or close, it's it's gone. To reactivate it, you again need to click on the little uh, icon that says radial filter, and then the there are little dots. If you have more than just one radial filter, you will have one uh, more than one dot uh, as you can see here but you need to click on it to activate it and only then um, the adjustments that you're going to do on the right hand side will be applied to the radial filter um, 
here now you can define what you actually want to to do in this uh, radial filter. There are several things you can click on, and they're predefined in this case. You can click on the little pop-down menu here, and then again, sorry, it's all in German, but I'll walk you through it in English. Um, you basically have the color temperature that you can change. You have um, the um, uh, oh my god, tonal. That would be like tonal uh, adjustment. So. It, it belongs to the white balance section of what you can uh, adjust in Lightroom, even even globally, but here you can do it for the specific area that you have defined. You can change exposure, contrast, the lights, the darks, clarity, saturation, sharpness, noise, moiré, uh, reduce um, frame, I don't know what that is, uh, you need it, and I very rarely use it, um, and you can make color adjustments. Beneath that, in the uh, second section from above, you have some predefined um, tools that you can use uh, that you would, for instance, know from your uh, analog Lightroom um, to increase brightness, um, to smoothen skin tones, uh, to optimize the iris in, in, in the eye for portraits, very important, uh, that you can darken specific areas, or you can bleach teeth. Um, I'll show you one example with uh, t t um, bleaching teeth. What it does is basically it pre-adjusts um, out of all the sliders that you have on in this section the ones that would be needed to, in this case, bleach teeth. So basically make them brighter, but also reduce any like yellowish tones. And they achieve it by reducing saturation on one side and increasing exposure by 0 0.4 in this case. Now, there's one important um, um, small check item uh, that you need to understand before you move on. And it says um, reverse mask in German. Maske umkehren. And when you click that, basically everything that you um, change in in the adjustments is going to be reversed. So uh, to demonstrate to you, I've now chosen exposure and when I make it really dark you see th the area actually inside the filter is going to be changed when you say revert mask. If you click it away it's going to be the area outside of the radial filter that is going to be affected. Um, I think it's the naming is a little bit confusing. Maybe in English it's better, um, but you'd only need to understand, and you can try it for yourself, um, that this will change the area of uh, where the effect will be applied to. So, um, but now we are already in the right section, and uh, we have already um, clicked the right um, um, click spot here. So we are not reverting the mask. So what we're going to do is, because the picture is basically already um, correctly exposed, and I want to keep the area of the her face and the arm and the, the upper shirt um, basically in focus um, of my picture. So I position the radial filter pretty much in center uh, with her face and, well, the arm and, and the shoulder. And what I'm then going to do is basically reduce the exposure in all other areas in a radial form. So it's going to be very quick and easy. I reduce exposure by, I mean, whatever pleases you, uh, you really have to decide. Um, I'll take 0.6. So I reduce the exposure level of the outer areas by um, 0.6 um, stops, I guess. No, it's not stops. Um, <laughs> Oh, actually, this stops because one would be one full stop. Um, and you already see that the the area of her face uh, is po popping out a little bit more, so it's lighter compared to the the other areas. Um, what you also can do um, with the monochrome, I rarely use it, and not with the monochrome, but more with the Summerlux um, lenses and even other lenses from Leica. The bokeh is already very nice, so I don't really see any need to decrease sharpness or clarity in the outer area, but you can do that um, by reducing clarity, like this, and you already see I go to the extreme that it's adding 
well, reducing clarity and adding a kind of simulated bokeh. Uh, but with the Leica lenses, I really want to keep it because they already have a good, good bokeh. And you can do the same with sharpness, Schärfe in German, which actually looks even a little bit better. But I'll leave that like this, and I'm really only going to um, change the exposure. You can now move around the, the radial filter, the posi position really to um, find the best spot for your increased, um, well not increased exposure, but for the, the lighter area. Um, and then there is another thing that I usually do, because you want to have the outer areas a little bit darker, but you, what you sometimes also want to do is increase, for instance, clarity for the face. And here in this case, um, I want to do that, uh, and I just show you the principle. Because you now cannot do any, you cannot apply the settings on this side in the radial filter, because everything is outside of the radial filter. So you basically need to duplicate the existing filter and then move it a little bit to the right or to the left so that you can actually um, um, define it. But then you need to revert the mask. Now everything that you do is going to be applied on this, in this case, on it within the radial filter. And so here, of course, I'm not going to do any exposure, but I will increase clarity a little bit, like, I don't know, um, 10. We also do not want to overdo it because that's probably, that's also what I mentioned in the first tutorial. You do not want to overdo um, too many things in, in photo editing. So here we are. It's already, if you, I'll put it in, in full frame so you can actually see a little bit better. It's already darker in the outside areas and a little bit lighter inside and it kind of already draws the attention a little bit better to the to her face, where we want it to have. Um, and I'm going to show you something else that is that comes in very handy here in this case. Um, and that's the, um, it's g I think it's called a correction brush in, in English. In German it's Korrekturpinsel. You click on it and you can do the exact same adjustments, but only to the area of where this uh, brush is going to be applied. So. And I take the example because the watch is actually too bright for me. So I want to reduce the brightness of this, this watch. And the way I do it, I can, it's already predefined, use the darken preset, which reduces exposure by minus um, 0.3. And then I just paint with my, with this um, cursor on my, on my watch. And even afterwards, I can adjust the, um, um, the, the, the level of um, what, I, what I've done. So I can reduce brightness even further. And again, just for demonstration purposes, I can really overdo it. Or I can leave them, I can put them where I really want to have them, even after I've painted on it. And you could do the same on the, on the hand, which is way too dark as we can already see. But then I can already show you how you can get rid of that again. If you press the Alt key, a little minus brush will appear and you can basically erase everything that you had done before, only in those areas. Um, the other interesting um, setting in, in the brush is the, uh, the smooth um, corner of smooth frame smooth edges, I guess, in English, where you can either make the um, the transition between where your paint strokes are and outside either very smooth or very harsh. And uh, the check mark down below here, uh, it, it, in English it's probably mask automatically, is very helpful. I always would leave it on because it actually detects um, lines and edges in the image and will not go over these edges, even if you if your brush stroke is going to be slightly over the edge, um, and I think that's that's very helpful. All right, that's it um, for this very quick tutorial. Um, I will go back to the overview and show you basically that 
what we have done so far. Um, on the right hand side again is the, the picture I've just done the adjustments to and let me very quickly set it back to the original um, status where we were in the beginning like this and you can see the face is very kind of flat and grayish and it, my eye as a viewer is not really being drawn to her face but maybe outside the window where I really don't want to have the, the viewer to look and uh, I'll go back to what we've just done like this and although the changes are very subtle and we're not at the at the end of um, how I would completely and finally edit this photo but for the purpose of this tutorial um, I think I've shown you uh, hopefully very clearly how you can um, fine-tune specific areas in your picture and not just make global adjustments in this case to uh, lead the eye in a nice way but there are obviously also other um, other purposes for this tool that you can also use and I would recommend you just play around with it a little bit and make yourself familiar with it and you will find many other um, applications that you can use it for. With that said, uh, thank you for your attention. Um, I hope I can bring out uh, a new video soon. Uh, if you have any suggestions, what you would like to see either in Lightroom uh, or in any other photo editing um, program, primarily probably the, um, the NIC software suite, please let me know and I will try and accommodate um, your recommendations. Have a nice day and see you soon on YouTube. Thank you.